everyone, it's Kino here. Welcome to day nine of the Ashtanga Yoga Challenge. Thank you so much for joining me on this challenge. I just want to take a moment and thank you for turning up every day for doing this practice because it's your inspiration and your commitment to the practice that keeps me inspired. And I just want to give a special thanks to everyone who has shown their support for the challenge by sharing their applause and working in with me to really just keep this practice going. Again, the entire tradition of yoga is made possible by students just like you who are so inspired from doing the practice that they keep coming back and get the support of their community and of teachers and of the tradition. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, the posture of the day is forward bend or Paschimottanasana. And this intense forward bending posture is our first seated posture in the Ashtanga Yoga method. It also marks the transition from the standing poses to through the balancing poses into the seated asanas. And the seated asanas comprise the vast bulk or majority of the primary series of Ashtanga Yoga. So when we work with seated forward folds, it's important that you really understand the healthy dynamics and the healthy implications of forward bending. So we work with forward bending technique if you can think about reviewing from our earlier session from day two, the standing pose, Padangasthasana, Padahastasana, that will give you a good foundation into the techniques we'll be applying into today's video. Now, one thing that we haven't talked about up until now is the very specific type of Ashtanga yoga breathing. And I'd like to talk about that now as we make the transition to the seated postures. When you work with the Ashtanga yoga breathing, it's a deep, powerful, resonant breath with sound. And this deep, powerful breathing kind of fills you up from the inside and generates an internal spark of heat or fire. Then we work with a strong engagement of the pelvic floor, drawing the muscles of the low belly in. And this is called Mula Bandha for the root lock and Uddiyana Bandha for the lower belly lock. And when these two come together, you have kind of a stable foundation. This is activated when you breathe in and also activated when you breathe out. Ashtanga yoga, unlike some forms of traditional hatha yoga, use a deep activation of the bandhas to support the muscles of the lower back and to support a healthy range of motion, both when you inhale and when you exhale. In Ashtanga yoga, we keep this area, the bandhas, tightly drawn in through each inhalation, through each exhalation, through all of the asanas. We do not engage in deep belly breathing because as you've already figured out by now, these asanas are very, very difficult and require you to really keep the muscles of the lower abdomen drawn tightly in. Now some students mistake this to assume that we're not breathing with the diaphragm. However, anatomically, the diaphragm never descends below the level of the navel or the belly button. So your diaphragm is never hanging out down here in your pelvis. If your diaphragm's down in your pelvis, then there are larger problems than forward bending that you need that I would probably recommend that you need to attend to. Okay. So when we're thinking about breathing with the diaphragm, you're allowing the diaphragm to drop down to the level of the navel, the lungs to expand three dimensionally. And then you're drawing the navel in to create a sense of hollowness inside of the muscles of the low belly. This is different than purely hardening the abdomen. If you harden the abdomen too much, you won't actually lengthen and create space along the inner regions of the pelvis. And when we're thinking about lengthening and creating space along the inner regions of the pelvis, this gives you access to just a nice healthy forward bend technique. So before we do our forward bend today, we're going to do a little bit of yogic breathing, which will also help you keep you nice and warmed up for today. So come to a comfortable seated position. Place the tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth behind your two front teeth. Very good. Then start to engage deep breathing with sound. So it feels like you're saying saw as you inhale and ha as you exhale, and then just draw the muscles of the low belly in and firm up your pelvic floor, which can feel a little bit like you're drawing the perineum or the muscles that control the anus and the genitals up into the body. Then keeping a clean orientation towards your center line or the you know, spinal axis of the body, then breathe with sound. And I'm going to do it with you so you can hear the resonance of the breath. So 
So just continue that deep, powerful breathing. It almost sounds like a motor and it almost sounds like something that's like generating a power inside of yourself and you're meant to be feeling an increased heat and fire just from that deep breathing with sound. And although I do hear the noise of the gardener outside, that is not the sound of the breath. You want to really make sure that brown is self-originated, you know? And this is, is being to stoke the internal fire. So in Ashtanga Yoga, we work with internal fire, so the heat gets turned on. And then with that internal fire, you can calm the mind, heat up the body from the inside, you get more strong, more flexible, all sorts of good things happen on the physical level, on the mental level, and also on the spiritual level. The idea of the awakening of consciousness is very deeply tied to the cultivation of that deep yogic breathing with sound. So let's try to do five deep breaths to initiate this time of our yoga practice today. So again, tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth behind your two front teeth. Then strong activation of the bandhas. Make sure not to harden or over tense the pelvic floor, but let everything just draw gently in towards the center line of the body. And now we begin that deep breathing with sound. Almost as though you're saying, saw as you inhale, ha as you exhale, you can follow my hand so we can continue this breath together. Inhale. Top of the inhale, exhale. Bottom of the exhale, squeeze pelvic floor, inhale. Top of the breath in, exhale. Bottom of the breath out, squeeze pelvic floor, inhale. Exhale. Squeeze pelvic floor, inhale. Two more times. Top of the breath in, exhale. Last one, inhale. Squeeze pelvic floor, feel the breath rise to the top of the head, and then exhale. Very good. Follow the breath out, and you'll find that your nervous system has already calmed down a little bit. That calming of the mind, that centering within yourself, the peace that comes, regardless of what's happening with external circumstances, is at the heart of the benefit, the deep benefit of the spiritual practice of yoga. Now let's just warm up our forward bend with that easy hanging forward bend so that you can really begin to just feel how this works in the body. So you're going to bend your knees, layer your chest on top of your thighs, and you can hold your uh, elbows, dropping the head down, knees spiral towards each other, and then inhale, hips back and up. Start to really think about the forward bend technique. So remember from the beginning of the challenge, you're thinking about elongating the back muscles and now, now you have the tool of really creating emptiness inside of the pelvis, sending the sitting bones away from the heels. Be very patient with yourself. Bend the knees, then inhale again, straighten the legs and just relax. Try to let your body unwind so you can feel that every breath is like a melting sensation. Let's stay for two more breaths here and really just dial your nervous system down. Don't worry if you seem to be tighter than I am. It just takes patience and dedication over many years. No judgment, no competition. Bend the knees. We're going to do one more time. Inhale, send the hips back and up. Relax and release the body. Let your forward bend. Just get nicely established before we do our seated forward fold. From here, let's walk your hands forward and step the feet back and we're gonna do downward facing dog for five breaths. So remember your downward facing dog technique, rolling the shoulders open, sending the hips back and up. If downward dog is too intense, you can always bend the knees a little bit or even come down into puppy pose. It's looking really good. Try to find that deep resonant breath with sound. Let's do one more breath. Very good. Now come forward to plank position, drawing the navel in. You got your plank pose, all right? So let's see if we can hold plank for five breaths, just making sure that you're connected in with your breath and your body. Two, you can activate a little bit the muscles of your shoulders and your thighs. Three, we're almost there. Four, 
and five. Then you're gonna walk your feet forward, cross at the shin bones, and then exhale, sit down, straighten out your legs, and now we're coming into Dandasana position. Dandasana position is the seated staff pose. So the idea with Dandasana position is that the spine is not rounded like this, nor is it extended forward. So you want to find a neutral position of the spine. And this is, starts and originates inside of the pelvis. You can take your fingers out to the side and just scoot from side to side until you can feel that your sitting bones are firmly planted on the ground or in your yoga mat, you press it down. Then I want you to take your hands to your iliac crest and let's just practice rotating the pelvis. See if you can keep your heels planted on the ground for this and rotate the tailbone under and this is going to get you into a tuck under position. Then rotate back and notice that it's hard to move the pelvis into that anterior tilt or that backwards tilt that this really challenges your flexibility. And we'll just do that one more time so we get a big tuck under and then we're going to rotate the pelvis back. Then see if you can just come back to neutral. So you want to feel your sitting bones, the very center of the sitting bones rooted into the ground. Now the kneecaps start to lift, but not independently of drawing your thigh bones into the inner space of the pelvis, then flex the feet. Depending now on the, how meaty your calf muscles are, and I tend to have kind of muscular calf muscles, so that means that my heels are going to come off the ground. Check the backs of your knees. You want the backs of the knees to remain off the ground. Otherwise, you might go into an unhealthy hyperextension. So we're just thinking about lifting the kneecaps, drawing the thigh bones into their sockets, and then the navel draws in. So now I want you to find the bunda. So the navel down to the pubic bone, you're gonna lift and get the feeling of the ribs floating away from the pelvis. And it's the spaciousness between the ribs and the hips. Not only direction from the front, the sides, and the back, your whole rib cage floats up like a balloon. Then energy rises along the center line and you can connect into the top of the head. Gently allow your shoulders to be placed in a neutral position, but your shoulder blades roll down the back. You can grip your fingertips on the ground if you feel your shoulders are elevated. Take note that your arms are probably pretty long and you can allow a soft bend in the elbows, but watch the neutral position of your shoulders. Then we'll take a couple breaths here. Your chin is down, your gaze is at the tip of the nose, and this seated staff position is the beginning of every seated asana. Make sure you're not arching the spine or rounding your back and really just feel your connection in to the natural expression of balance in dandasana position. Let's go for one more breath. Remember that deep breathing with sound. You're activating the muscles of the pelvic floor and drawing up along the center line. Next, you're going to prepare to fold forwards. Remember our forward bend technique. You're emptying out the muscles of the pelvic floor and then pivoting into the hip joints. And you want to keep the back straight for as long as possible to so pivot into the hip joints. But make sure that your back muscles Try to back bend my way into the forward bend and the belly sticks out and then I'm slightly you know, disengaging my pelvic floor and the support for the hamstrings. So you want to keep the muscles of the belly in and then pivot forward kind of as a unit. Now you can check your hand position. Maybe you can hold on to your ankles or maybe you can do the traditional grip of holding on to your big toes. From here, we inhale, prepare. And this is the same prepare that we enter from Padangustasana. The navel draws deeply and you're really feeling as much as possible you're drawing the navel in. And this just helps get a sense of deep connection into the pelvis. Tune into your hip joints and think about your hip creases deepening. And then as you exhale, do not pull with your arms. Simply use your core muscles to lift the spine over the thighs and then relax your back muscles to fold forward. The longer you're in the posture, the more that you can take that relaxation and that deep fold beyond the hip joints into the muscles that control the hip movement into the muscles around the glutes. Watch your shoulders. If the shoulders squeeze up to the ears, just roll the shoulder blades down the back. After a few breaths, then inhale, straighten the arms, exhale here, reach around and you can hold onto your feet because sometimes the feet kind of drop out to the side, so you're gonna keep the feet very connected, or you can hold on to the outsides of the feet, or you can interlock your fingers, or you can hold your wrists. 
I'm gonna hold onto the feet to get started today. And just if you hold onto the feet, try to bend all your toes really far backwards. You can work your toe flexibility as well. And then reaching out through the balls of your feet, inhale, prepare, deep breath in. And again, elongate, don't pull with the arms, let your back muscles relax. If you feel a little bit of burning sensation in your back muscles, that's why we have to use those bandhas. If you feel that this grip is too easy for you, you can always switch to a deeper grip, but make sure that the shoulders are not squeezing up to the ears and make sure not to be in any competition with yourself that says that one grip is better than the other. Hold it for two more breaths. You can either gaze at the nose tip or you can look forward to the toes and check to see that the bases of the big toes are pressing into each other. But if your neck gets it all engaged in that, just head down. Inhale, straighten and come up and take whatever grip is comfortable for you. Exhale there. Inhale, come on up. Now I want you to cross your feet underneath you like this. And then we're gonna come back to planks. Just kind of roll over your shin bones and then just glide it back to plank pose. Exhale, remember, chaturanga, nice and easy. Inhale, upward facing, nice and easy. Exhale, downward facing. Settle for a moment and then cross your shin bones. Exhale, sit down and straighten the legs again. Now, if that was very difficult for you, I'd like to offer you some options to increase the accessibility of this posture so you understand how to work. Number one, let's say Dandasana is okay for you, but when you go forward, you start to round your back a lot. Well then, I recommend don't try to reach for your toes. Take your hands on your knees or take the hands on the ground and then just work here. So you can inhale, prepare, and then just try to pivot a little forward. So you can hold on to your shin bones or you can hold on to the floor. Alternatively, you're welcome to use a yoga strap. So if you feel, oh, I have to undo the strap. Here I go. It's a very long strap, huh? So this might be important. You can fold up your strap and then you can either bend your knees, wrap the strap around your feet, straighten the legs and work here. So instead of holding onto your feet, you're gonna use the strap to help keep that little internal rotation of your hip joints and then exhale, you'll relax the back to fold forward. And this might give you a little bit better connection into the pivot point deep inside of your pelvis. Alternatively, if you feel that the strap isn't helping you or that there's too much pressure on the lower back, then you're welcome to bend your knees and bring your chest close to your thighs. And this can really help you, particularly if you have any back issues. So if you have like a herniated disc or a, a really a pulled back muscle or just really sore back muscles, your forward bend might feel more supported here. Of course, we're de-emphasizing the hamstring movement and over-emphasizing the relaxation of the, pal the, the back muscles. So you could also combine, so we could be in, inhale, prepare, and then exhale, fold. And then once you're folded forward, you can try to keep your chest as closely knitted together towards your thighs as possible, and then straighten the legs. Now that looks easy, but you wanna bear in mind that you have to give yourself decades of practice before you start to see the results. Of course, you can do the same thing with the yoga strap. So if you have the strap, you can move the strap around like this. Inhale, prepare, exhale, fold. And as long as you keep your chest really closely knit together to your thighs, you can again follow that down. Now, one of the benefits of starting with the bent knee and moving towards straight is that you can use engagement, particularly of the antagonistic muscle groups of your quadriceps to help lengthen the back of the leg. Okay, now let's say that none of that really worked and you still feel really frustrated in your forward bends. Let me tell you, I really understand. You might look at me and think, well, Kino, it looks like you were just born in a forward fold. I totally wasn't. My very first yoga class I went to in the seated forward bend and tried to touch my toes and they looked like this. And I started to round my back and try to reach forward, right? And it was a teacher that came by and helped me pivot at the hip joints. And that was my first lesson in yoga about body awareness. That I realized I didn't know where my pelvis was and I was just moving forward without any self-awareness. So we understand that the first technique of yoga is always self-awareness. And so we're thinking about becoming more aware, more alive, more awake. So if you're someone who in Dandasana, you cannot lift the muscles of the lower back in to let that natural lumbar curve be expressed, your Dandasana looks like this. Number one, first try. Try to move forward. If it doesn't happen, this might mean that you lack a little flexibility. If bending the knees 
and then moving forward did not help you access that flexibility. You could try to sit on a few blankets or a nice big towel. You could grab a beach towel and fold it up and sit on it. And then the sheer act of elevating the hips high enough, and you keep that little scoot over, will help you reach that pivot point forward, okay? When you reach that pivot point forward, it just gets so much easier to forward fold because now you're using that little bit of lift inside of the hips to help you pivot forward. It should be said that because the pelvis is elevated, the attachments of the hamstrings could be a little bit exposed in this situation. So it's very important that you root your heels into the ground and you keep a very slight engagement in your whole leg so that you can really begin to work both flexibility and strength. And you treat this more of a sort of a dynamic flexibility posture and less of a passive flexibility posture, okay? So this is particularly important if you're gonna to need to elevate your hips to reach a comfortable position in Dandasana. Now, once you reach a comfortable position in Dandasana, you might find that that pivot forward is a little easier and you can hold the ankles, you can hold the toes. I recommend then to, again, exhale, fold, and you're constantly thinking about elongating the back muscles, keep your heels on the ground for this one. You can combine this one with the strap or with the bent knees, all right? So if you're combining this one with the strap, you can, again, come from here, inhale, prepare, exhale, fold, knitting your chest onto your thighs, Slowly as you exhale, straighten the legs. But again, watch carefully to make sure that you're not overstressing the hamstring. Once you overstress the hamstring, unfortunately, it takes a long time for it to heal, especially if it's at the hamstring attachment. So anybody with an injured hamstring will know that it's not fun, particularly in yoga, when you're dealing with an injured, an injured muscle. So if you do happen to have a hamstring injury, then you can work with a slightly bent knee and make sure your sitting bones are rooted into the ground so you kind of engage the back of the leg and focus more on the back muscles releasing and the pelvis moving. You can really still do the deep work of the bandhas. And this is a way to kind of protect the hamstring but still allow you to forward bend. This is only if you have an injury that you would want to do it like this. Otherwise, you're working the legs to be very, very straight and you're working, with, you know, if you're not injured, you're going to lift the kneecaps and draw the femurs into their sockets as much as possible. So, this is a forward bending technique. And the forward bending technique, Pashimatanasana, sets you up for so many other lessons in your yoga practice. When you're working your yoga practice, you want to think about, uh, you want to, you want to think about how your forward bending technique is playing out across the vast stream of yoga poses that exist within that whole sort of, you know, blessing of so many yoga poses that are out there. So all these yoga asanas, we take a look at the forward bend technique and understand that the forward bend technique informs against so many other asanas. So when you're looking at the healthy forward bend technique, I want you to really give yourself patience and time as this unfolds over the course of your whole lifetime. Don't be in a rush with your yoga practice or what can often suffer is your body. So just continually to listen Turn this into a listening practice so that you can listen to your muscles, your joints, your breath, your body, your emotions, your mind, and you can really understand that yoga is a tool of self-awareness. Our goal is to first know ourselves deeply. So when you practice yoga, all these asanas are a tool to a vast wellspring of self-knowledge. And then in that space of self-knowledge, the next step is learning to accept and love yourself completely. So you don't wanna treat the asanas as yet another standard that you're not meeting. Instead, use the tool of asana to learn that self-awareness technique and let self-awareness turn into self-love. And in that space, we'll be tapped into kind of the magic of, well, the magic and mystery of life itself. Because if life isn't about love, well, what is it about then? Well, everyone, thanks so much for joining the challenge. Take this forward bend technique and apply it into practice. I really appreciate you spending this time with me. I know how precious our time and valuable our time is. And I just really thank you for spending this time with me, for getting on your mat and doing the practice. Let these lessons come off the mat or come out of the yoga pose and into everyday life. And I will send you a lot of love, everyone. And I will see you tomorrow.